In the second part of chapter two, we're going to be adding more definitions and theorems to our toolkit that we can use in writing proofs. In 2.7, we're going to be looking at parallel lines and transversals. This is a long section, so we're covering this over several days of class and three different videos. So we're gonna start out first by talking about basic relationships between lines. So any two lines will either intersect or not. As a reminder, remember that an intersection is a point in common between those two lines. So intersecting lines that do share exactly one point in common, if they are coplanar, then they are intersecting lines. Okay, in order for them to intersect, they must be coplanar by definition. If we have intersecting lines, they have two different types that we can divide intersecting lines into. They can be perpendicular or oblique. Perpendicular lines intersect to form a right angle. So we would say from this diagram that line L is perpendicular to line M, and we can write that same statement in symbols where a little tiny right angle intersection is the symbol for perpendicular. So line L is perpendicular to line M. Lines that intersect can also be called oblique. Now, this is if they intersect to form any angle that is not a right angle. Now, there's no special symbol to indicate that a pair of lines form an oblique intersection, but a pair of intersecting lines are either perpendicular or oblique. So just like intersecting lines are either perpendicular or oblique, any pair of lines is either intersecting or non-intersecting. So these are two lines that do not have any points in common. Even if we extend, for example, these two lines here, if we extend them out to inf infinite distances in either direction, no matter how wonderful or awful my drawing may be, those lines never intersect. They never share any point in common in three-dimensional space. Non-intersecting lines also have two subcategories. They can either be parallel, in which case they are coplanar and do not intersect. The symbol for that is a pair of parallel lines drawn vertically. And you would say that phrase as line AB is parallel to line CD. In diagrams, for example, on this one here on the right, these little arrows with a direction on them, they're actually triangles, but we use them to show that two lines are parallel. If non-intersecting lines are not parallel, then they are called skew lines. So two non-intersecting skew lines are called that when they are non-coplanar and also do not intersect. So in our diagram here to the right, lines A, B, and C, D are not in the same plane, and they are not parallel because they are non-coplanar. The other thing that we're going to talk about a little bit here is parallel planes. So just as two lines are parallel if they are coplanar and do not intersect, two planes can be called parallel planes if they do not share any common points. They're already planes, so we don't have to talk about coplanar, but we would still use the same parallel symbol, except now we're going to name our planes either with a single capital letter or with the word plane. And if they're parallel, they never intersect. No matter how big I expand my little two-dimensional drawing, you have to imagine that those planes actually extend to infinity in two dimensions. Segments can also be parallel. So if these two segments, for example, 
segment AB and segment CD, they are on two parallel lines, and then those segments are then parallel. So remember, the parallel lines, even when they're extended, never intersect. So as long as those lines are parallel, any two segments, one on one line and one on the other, will be parallel segments. If you are watching this video as part of a class assignment for me, and not just watching this to catch up on a missed day or to review, I want you to complete the rest of this page with the video paused, and then once you've completed it, I want you to then restart the video and then use that to check your answers. We're going to use our diagram to answer these questions. In A, we're going to name three lines parallel to line GH. So parallel lines are coplanar but do not intersect. So we also have line EF, we have line AB, so I have the bottom plane that line EF shares, so I will go ahead and label that. So we have EF, we have AB, and that shares this side with line GH, but it asks for three lines specifically, so there must be one more. Well, just because there's not a plane drawn on the diagram doesn't mean we couldn't create one. If you can imagine cutting this uh, figure from the top right diagonally down to the bottom left, all right, not along a point, but along that line, you can imagine that from line CD to GH, you could make a diagonal plane. And so line CD could also be coplanar with GH, just not on one of the sides of our shape. So that is our third line, and that is line CD. The next part of this is, are any of these lines parallel to each other? Well, on the top, of the box, AB and CD form the vertices, and so they are coplanar, therefore they are also parallel to each other. On the side that's over here, lines CD and lines EF form two sides of that box, and so they are also on the same plane, and therefore parallel to each other. Again, you could also take A, B, and E, F and slice diagonally through our box in the diagram, and there would be another plane there. So the answer is yes, they are actually all parallel to each other. Before we move on to part B, I am going to erase all of the marks on the diagram here so we can start fresh on B which asks us to name the four lines perpendicular to line CE, which is this vertical line at the front corner of the box shown in the diagram. So in order to be perpendicular, they must form a right angle. So those right angles all happen at the corners, the vertices of my figure. So line CD is perpendicular, line AC is perpendicular, E, F, and G, E are all perpendicular. So let's list those. So we have A, C, C, D, G, E, and E, F. The second part of B asks us if any of these lines are parallel to each other. And the answer again here is that yes. Some of them are parallel to each other. For example, line AC is parallel to line GE, and line CD is parallel to line EF. So while 
pairs of them are parallel, they're not all parallel to all the other lines. Part C asks you to name a line skew to line AG. So AG is this line here that goes through point K. Now we had two things that we need to satisfy in order for a line to be skew with another line. So the first thing we need is to be not coplanar and also that it needs to not intersect. So the first one is not coplanar. So the line we pick cannot share a side of the box with line AG. So in the diagram, the front of the box is off limits. The side of the box, all right, that we kind of can't see is off limits. And if you think about cutting through the box diagonally, in this case, it's kind of a sideways diagonal cut, then you can imagine that line DF could also be on a plane that cuts through the corners of that box. So that leaves us with only a few other options, okay? So we can't pick any line that goes through point A or point G since that would cause them to intersect. So let's pick another one. We can pick line CD because AG is vertical and CD is kind of coming out of the screen, out of the paper, all right, but not intersecting. In three-dimensional space, those never intersect. On the two-dimensional image, sure, but not in real-life 3D space, okay? So line CD is one option, or we could pick line EF, Or we could pick CF. Or we could draw an imaginary line coming this way through H and C. So just because it's not drawn on our diagram doesn't mean we can't have that. So and there's others we could probably come up with, but we'll stop there. And again, I'm going to reset the diagram before moving on to answer D. D asks us to name a plane parallel to plane EFG. So EFG is the bottom of the box in the diagram. So a parallel plane is never going to intersect. And so if you think of this like a box, this is the bottom. And so the plane that would never intersect would be the top. And so that is here. And remember, we need three points to name the plane. And so you can call this plane A, B, C, or A, B, D, or A, C, D, or B, C, D. E asks us to name a plane that contains point G, so that's here, and is parallel to plane BDF. So BDF form that back wall of the box, and then we want a plane that is parallel but contains G. So that is going to be the front of the box. Again, we just need three points that are on that plane so as long as you pick any three out of the points A, C, E, G, or K that's over here on the side. So for example, I'm just going to pick the first three. So these are the points that are on that plane. So let's name it A, C, E. Again, if you picked any combination of three out of those five listed, then that's a correct answer. I'm not gonna go through all the combinations. Again, I'm going to reset the diagram before moving on. F asks us to name a line that contains point J, which is back here, and that is parallel to line A, G. 
So AG is vertical, if you think about the edge of a box, and then J is on the back corner. So I want another line that is vertical. And so DF is parallel to line AG and contains point J. The second part of the question asks if there's more than one such line. Well, we could call this line by various other names. We could pick points D and J or points J and F to name it. However, in order for lines to be parallel, remember they have to not only not intersect, but they must be coplanar. So if you imagine slicing this box here, I kind of have a plane like this. And if I have a line and a point, I can only make one plane where all of those are coplanar. So in this case, there is only one such line, even though you may have picked another pair of points to describe it. In G, we're asked to name a line that is perpendicular to line BD. So that is this line here, and that contains point C. So perpendicular lines meet at a 90 degree angle. So from C, if I draw a 90 degree angle to the line, it intersects at point D. So that would be line C, D. Remember, we can also write that like this. And the second part asks us if there is more than one such line. And because it has to intersect at a 90 degree angle, if I have a specific point that has to be perpendicular to that line, then I'm only going to have one direction I can draw that line. So there's only one line. So the answer to this is no. And our final question about this diagram, we're asked what is the relationship between line BH, which is that back far corner looking at the box, and line CD. So if I imagine that this is actually a three dimensional shape, line BD is kind of the back far edge, whereas CD is the top side edge. And so if I'm thinking about the edges of a box, then line BH is a vertical line and line CD is a horizontal line. So they're not coplanar and they don't intersect. They don't share a point in common. So the answer to this is they are skew lines because they are not intersecting and they are not coplanar. We have a few more additions to our geometry vocabulary for 2.7a. The first of which is a transversal. A transversal is a line. It intersects at least two coplanar lines, but at two different points. So even though, in, for example, in this diagram, my two horizontal-ish lines eventually will intersect where this line, line T, intersects them, it is not at the same point on both those other two lines. The other way you could think about this is that when a transversal intersects two lines, eight angles are formed, okay? And they're labeled in this diagram to the right. Of those eight angles, four of them fall in between the two lines that the transversal intersects. And so those angles are angle three, four, five, and six. And if you remember from previous work this year, the word interior means inside. Those four are inside. The other four must be outside. And our word for that in geometry is exterior angles. So in this diagram, one, two, seven, and eight fall outside my two lines. And so they are exterior angles.
There are also four angle relationships that are formed by these eight angles, and we're going to go through those. Our first angle relationship is corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are two angles, so it's a pair of angles that lie on the same side of the two lines, so of those original two lines, not the transversal. Okay, so the same side, so either above or below, and then on the same side of the transversal. So my transversal is this one. So we have four different pairs that are corresponding. So I have one and four because they're both above the two lines and to the left of the transversal. We have angles two and six. They're both above the two lines, but to the right of the transversal. And then below the two lines, we have three and seven are both the bottom left in those sets of angles, and then four and eight are below the two lines and to the right of the transversal. Our next angle relationship is alternate interior angles. Again, this is going to be a set of two angles or a pair of angles that are inside, that would be interior, and then alternate, means opposite sides of the transversal. So in this case, again, I have two pairs of alternate interior because inside my two lines, I only have four angles. And in order for them to be on opposite sides of the transversal, I can only pair them up two ways. So I can pair up three and six, or I can pair up four and five as alternate, because they're on opposite sides, interior, inside the two lines, angles. So using similar logic, alternate exterior angles are going to be on opposite sides of the transversal, but they're going to be outside the two original lines. Again, there's only four total angles that match outside the two lines, part of the description, and then in order to be on opposite sides of the transversal, there's only two combinations. So in this diagram, that is angle one and angle eight. They're both outside the two lines and then on opposite sides of the transversal. Or we have angle two and angle seven. Our fourth angle relationship that's formed by a transversal intersecting two lines is consecutive interior angles. It's another pair of angles, all right? We know that interior means inside the two lines, but then consecutive, if you remember when we have consecutive numbers, it means they come one after the next. So you can think of them as being next to each other or same side interior angles. Consecutive is the actual word for it, but you can remember it as the same side of the transversal, interior, inside the two lines. Okay, so you may see it written this way, but you should write it this way. Okay, so again, there's going to be two pairs. We have angle three and angle five inside the two lines and to the left of the transversal. And on the right, we have angles four and six.